Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. You may know that I have several pet peeves concerning Scripture and the way that the Bibles are laid out, not the content, but the way they're laid out. Particularly, I have a problem on some occasions where they place the divisions between chapters. The divisions between chapters are not part of the original text, nor are the verse numbers. And sometimes the thought that's being expressed is not correctly ended before another thought begins to be expressed. Or sometimes they divide a chapter in a place where it really should continue. And so my point is Hebrews chapter 3 and Hebrews chapter 4 are both speaking about the same thing. They really should be one continuous chapter. As I said, it's the chapter divisions are arbitrary. Uh, the chapter and verse numbers were made by people who were trying to um, have reference materials keyed to certain locations where you could find what it was they were talking about. But they were not done, uh, in my opinion, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And in some cases, they are problematic. And so in chapter 3, we read over and over again variations on Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as you did or as they did during the rebellion. And then um, to go with that, because they did harden their hearts, the Lord said, they shall never enter my rest. And then um, uh, this idea being, don't harden your heart so you can enter the Lord's rest, the Lord's Sabbath rest. And so this this thought that was begun, this teaching that was begun in Hebrews 3 When Hebrews was written, there was no division between 3 and 4, and it continues on into chapter 4. So now, let me read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did, But the message they heard was of no value to them, because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said, so I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words, on the seventh day God rested from all of his works. And again, in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted, today If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us, therefore, make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience." For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give an account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven— Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need." The writer is making the point in various ways that just as God had offered rest and deliverance and promises to Israel in the Old Covenant, and just as Israel, part of Israel, the the first generation coming out of Egypt, 
did not stand in his promises and therefore were rejected when God said, they shall never enter my rest. The writer of Hebrews is trying to make the comparison of us. See, the people of Israel were supposed to be men and women of faith, trusting the promises of God. And you and I, by extension, are supposed to be people of faith, trusting the promises of God. And so the writer tells us that those who do not trust God, do not believe his promises, do not act on his promises, they will never enter his rest. Obedience is the key here, friends. And so let's read from verse 1 and 2. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them, because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. You may remember that Joshua and Caleb obeyed. I'm not reading from the text. These are my words now. Joshua and Caleb of that generation obeyed. They were able to enter the promised land of God after 40 years. But the others who disobeyed, those who did not have faith, died in the wilderness. They were unable to enter the promised land. And so this is making a New Testament comparison with us as believers that we need to be a men and women of faith, trusting God, obedient to the Word of God, believing the promises of God, so that we can enter the promised land, the promised place of rest. And this rest is confirmed in various ways in the text. It's compared to the Sabbath. The Sabbath day, uh, God rested. And so um, it gives various aspects of this, but the key to remember is obedience. We must be obedient to enter fully the promises of God and to enter his rest. Only the obedient can enter his rest. So verse 3, now we who have believed enter that rest just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. So this was after the giving of the Ten Commandments and the Sabbath. But it was talking of another rest that the people of God could enter. And so in verse 5, in the passage above, he says, They shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter the rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. You see, friends, there remains a greater rest than the Sabbath day for those of us in Jesus Christ. In verse 8, for if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day of rest. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following the example of disobedience. You see, friends, we have the Word of God. We have the will of God expressed in the Bible. And obedience to the Word is the key. It's not enough to know the Word if you don't obey the Word. Some time ago, I did a personal study searching the Scriptures to see what indicates to God that we actually love Him. In other words, what is the love language of God? How does God receive our love? And it became apparent to me that through the words of Jesus and other places in the Scriptures, that God receives love as obedience, or conversely, He receives our in obedience to the things we know about Him as expressions of love. Jesus said explicitly, if you love me, obey my commandments. If you love me, obey my teachings, obey my words. And so, friends, we need to make every effort to be people of obedience, because those children of Israel, in their disobedience, were unable to enter the promises of God. It's through obedience that we enter, and it's through the Word of God that we know the will of God. The Word of God is the key to knowing the will of God. Verse 12, the Word of God is active and alive, sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And so we don't have to guess at the will of God. We can read the Word of God where it's explicitly stated in various ways what it is the Lord desires us to do. And then it becomes incumbent upon us to be obedient to what we understand from the Word of God. Now, having said all of this, Jesus understands our humanity. 
He understands our weaknesses. He overcame humanity and weakness for us, not only to help us to atone for our sins, but to give us an example that it's possible to resist weakness and temptation and so forth. Jesus did it. Jesus lives in us. He's enabling us with his Holy Spirit to be like him. And so, although he empathizes with our weaknesses, he empowers us to boldly overcome them. He also gives us grace to overcome when we have sinned, to come to the throne of God and repent, or grace to help us to resist when we need it. So reading from verse 14 and following, Therefore, since we have a great high priest, Jesus, who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we don't have a high priest who's unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You see, friends, the place to obtain mercy is at God's throne of grace. We've been given an invitation to approach that throne with confidence so that we may receive mercy. We don't come telling God what we deserve. We come asking for mercy. We come in the grace of God in our times of need, whatever they are. We come because the Son of God made a way for us to come. He understands us, He knows us, but He enables us to be better than we are in our humanity. And so, Lord, we recognize that there is indeed a Sabbath rest for the people of God, and we are to make every effort to enter that rest. The Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, is our Sabbath rest. Every day to us should be a Sabbath rest in Him. Lord, help us to enter fully into your rest. We want to enter in by obedience. Help us, Lord, not to harden our hearts and forgive us where we have hardened our hearts. We know that you understand our weakness, God, but we're asking for grace to overcome our weakness. Help us, Lord, not to sin. We appreciate the invitation to your throne, and we come boldly now asking for help in our time of need. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.